Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the unidirectional composites. So, this we have uh, discussed uh, in last uh, class that uh, unidirectional composite were prepared from fibers as a matrix through drape spinning technique, powder coating technique and film stacking technique and these are uh, tested for their uh, three point bending testing and short beam testing. Okay. Now, here if we see the three point bending test is mainly for the flexural strength and short beam test is basically interlaminar properties. So, from this diagram if we see the UDCP has got highest flexural strength as well as the short short beam test that highest flexural strength we get from the powder coating. Whereas, the film stacking technique it results very poor flexural characteristics. So, we can see here that average flexural strength here it is a 232. On the other hand for film stacking it is very low. Okay. The peak load for UDC P was the highest among the three as I have seen I have discussed it is nearly three times higher than the UDC F. So, it is nearly three times higher ok. Also the modulus, modulus of UDC P was observed to be highest. It was hypothesized that the better impregnation of PP powder in UDC P was responsible for higher flexural strength because the powder is already present inside the structure. So, that is why it is very high the peak load is highest among the three composite it is four time highest in short beam strength for UDC P and UDC D was observed to be within 18 percent. So, that is within 18 percent. So, why is it so? The thorough impregnation of resin within the structure led to higher load resistance and interlaminar delamination process that is that interlaminar delamination is restricted here. Okay. So, that is why it gives a higher short beam strength. So, due to the proper impregnation although the powder coating has got very good impregnation still the drape span yarn also goes shows the hybrid yarn shows the um, uh, better performance as compared to the film stacking technique. So, here we can see here that uh, the this is the drape span yarn here. In drape span yarn we can see clearly the clear the fiber zone and matrix zone it is separated we can so this is the fiber zone cluster of fiber. And similarly in uh, film stacking we can see that matrix and fibers are totally separated this is mat uh, fiber here it is a matrix. But in case of powder coating the power penetration of 
powder penetration of matrix is very good within the the reinforcing material they are uniformly distributed that is why it results very good flexural strength. So, scanning electron microscopy shows that the carbon fiber so F and matrix they are very good intermixing is there as I have already mentioned ok. Same powder coating process can thus overcome the challenge of using high viscosity thermoplastics. So, that is why the problem of thermoplastics are the problems main uh, problem is that the due to the high viscosity it it its penetration within the uh, reinforcing material is uh, poor it needs very high pressure and it also results a white content but the powder coating is the solution in that direction <coughs> microcomputed tomography of the composite after the flexural testing was done here in this diagram the matrix was represented by green color this green color is matrix and black color is the uh, carbon uh, reinforcing material. In UDCD which is made from a drapeion hybridion we can see here this is the top side during the uh, bending uh, study three point bending this is the top side. So, in three point bending this is the composite base and here it is a bending. So, this is the top side is shown here and this is the bottom sign this is the good. So, in top side what we have observed there is a significant fiber breakages are there in the compression side also and bottom layer undergoes the tension here ok. The not that much breakage took place here that means inter um, there is no proper bonding is there due to relatively higher void content. So, this at the top side at the compression side the breakage is due to the pressure that damage of fiber, but at the extension side there is not significant breakage was observed. On the other hand if we see the powder coated composite the breakage was there in, in both in top and bottom side. That means, the load is being shared by the reinforcing material at the back side also that is why it gives very high flexural rigidity. If we see the film stacked composite absolutely there is no breakage of carbon uh, fiber the reinforcing fiber. What does it mean? It there is a clear sliding between the carbon filament and the matrix. So, that is why the proper load bearing is not there. So, this has been explained here I have already explained. So, this indicates partial transfer of load between carbon 2 and PP matrix for UDC D at the other side back side there is no uh, transfer of load is there and UDC P that is a powder coating we have already explained that uh, it is a proper impregnation is there that is why proper load sharing is there that is which result very high flexural strength. And here uh, simply it is sliding is there that is why there is no load sharing 
or very less load sharing. Now, you can see schematically here this is the fiber and powder coating is there that is a proper penetration of the powder, powder proper penetration of matrix component is there inside the carbon toe. This we have already discussed here. For film stacking composite, the same image clearly indicates that matrix rich and matrix starved portion that we have already seen okay, layer by layer. So, higher viscosity of polypropylene film as well as low melt flow index does not support impregnation of polypropylene into the various layers. So, that is these are the different reasons and our last experiment is that the investigation of the mechanical performance of carbon polypropylene two dimensional and three dimensional oven composites. So, that uh, from the drape spun yarn that is a uh, hybrid yarn and from hybrid yarn top rig and uh, the powder coated top rig we have produced 2D oven fabric and 3D oven fabrics and from there we uh, produce composites. So, to prepare textile preform through 2D and 3D weaving for thermoplastic composite using powder coating and drip spun hybridian and to consolidate the produced fabric in the compression molding process and to produce 3D composite laminates. Now, from 2D fabric we have to produce 3D composite laminates. Here what we have done? We have used three layers of 2D fabric. This is 2D oven fabric, three layers to keep the mass per unit area same as that of 3D weaving, 3D oven fabric and to investigate their properties. Now, let us see the plan of work. So, we have used two uh, technique here two techniques are uh, drip spun hybridian and powder coated hybrid top rig. So, powder coated top rig is there then heat setting of hybridian is required powder coating system involves the heat setting. So, we do not need heat setting here then we have weaving. So, we have oven in 2D fabric and 3D we have used two different structures orthogonal 3D and angle interlock 3D for both uh, powder coated and drape spinning yarn. And then we have used compression molding for 2D plane oven composite we have used uh, three layers as I have mentioned maintain the mass per unit area and then 3D composite 3D oven composite in using the compression molding. We have studied the mechanical characteristics and also as well as matrix distribution. In mechanical tensile bending notch impact and mechanics of crack propagation this we have discussed and microcomputer tomography. So, what we have done we have studied 2D versus 3D. So, orthogonal effect of weave we have studied then what we have studied effect of fabric structure that of 3D oven 
fabric that angle interlock and orthogonal effect of weave here offset. Then effect of hybrid yarn production using powder coating and drape system and effect of hybrid yarn production of both for 2D and 3D. This are the factors we have studied here. So, hybrid yarn production drape spinning that we have already explained. After drape spinning we have what we have done we have here we have uh, treated with uh, heat treatment two heaters were there. So, heater 1 and heater 2. So, thermally treated drape spun toe freg is produced to improve the weaveability. Otherwise, there will be fraying of the sheath, yeah, sheath fibers okay. that is why to improve the weaveability we have used. So, these are the um, various steps or reasons for heat setting. So, for better weaving performance we have to set the heat setting. So, before heat setting the ACM image and this is after heat setting partial melting is there. We do not need complete melting, complete melting will increase the flexural rigidity that will uh, create problem during weaving. So, partial melting is uh, um, required to have a better flexibility also and uh, electrostatic uh, spray coating that we have already explained. So, this is used for powder coating and then we have taken uh, these yarns for weaving of 2D weaving and 3D weaving. The 2D weaving uh, oven structure is here. So, it is a plain oven fabric one up one down and this structure is that the 3D angle interlock, where the we have uh, weft yarns, these are the weft yarns and warp yarn, there we have two types of warp yarn. One is the stuffer warp yarn, which are almost straight in um, alignment, and another is the binder warp end. Okay. Uh, this structure is it is a 3D interlock structure and 3D orthogonal structure here again the yellow color thread are the binder warp thread and this blue are the stopper warp thread which are little bit straight. These are the structure one by one up one down. Okay peg planning is there and peg plan for the orthogonal structure this is the peg plan okay detailed peg plan is there here in orthogonal structure you can see here the binder yarns binder options there it has got very high crimp okay so if we apply the stress in the warp direction the mainly the stuffard warp yarns are straight because as here the uh, uh, it is stuffard warp yarns are stressed because of the fact that they are almost straight. Similarly, the angle interlock these are the peg plan this binder threads are little bit angled. So, here you can see the uh, crimp is relatively lower here okay. crimp of the binder here. So, warping and uh, weaving was done using CCI loom. This is the production of fabric here this is uh, the beam for binder warp yarn, beam for stuffer warp yarn. There are two types of beams are used here. 
and the loom is a repair type loom. Now, if we see here, this is the weaving of the 3 D fabric. a small room, one is binder, another is the for stuffer warp. Finally, we get the 2 D and 3 D fabrics. Now, the abbreviations of the uh, composite word this is 2 D W C D means two dimensional made of two dimensional fabric oven fabric composite made from drape yarn ok. And 2 D W C P from the powder coating similarly 3 D A C angle interlock and orthogonal structure. In this way, we have uh, prepared uh, samples of 6 different samples were prepared. Now, 2 D fabrics are 3 layer. So, inch per inch, peaks per inch is given and here the mass per unit area is almost very close to each other. So, they are re equivalent ok. Fiber volume fractions are almost equal. So, they are almost same very close around 50 to 55 uh, percent. So, it is a fraction it is not a mechanical characteristics we have done tensile uh, characteristics here using universal tensile machine ok. Following the ASTM standard test method. Now, if we see here the tensile stress it is highest in case of 2 D oven composite made from the powder coating and 3D from angle interlock it is followed by angle interlock and then 3D orthogonal is the least strain. So, basic reason is that that due to the very high crimp and these are tested in warp direction. Very high crimp in the, the binder threads they are not carrying the load, but in case of 2 D all the warp threads were carrying loads simultaneously. Here the loads were carried only by the stuffer threads which are relatively less crimped. We can see here the both the modulus and the tensile strength are higher in case of 2 D composite, 2 D oven composite, 3 D composites are less this picture shows that and but if we compare the drip with the powder coating always powder coating is higher than drip for same for all the structures this is mainly due to 
proper impregnation of powder or a matrix within the reinforcing material. Here it is a tensile modulus, the same trend is observed here. So, the values of the average tensile strength as well as the modulus obtained are represented here. So, this we have already seen here that 2 D is higher. So, the strength of the 2 D composite was found to be 36 percent and 45 percent higher than angle interlock and orthogonal respectively. Similarly, the composite produced from powder coated top rig, the maximum stress of this. So, for this is for drape span and uh, the powder coated, the trends are same. As I have already explained, on loading the 2D composites, all warp threads they share the load, but in case of 3D composites, only the stuffer shares the load as the binder warp had undergone large folding or crimping during weaving. This is the large folding is there. So, they do not share the load, that is why the 3D fabrics shows very low uh, modulus and stre strength. So, value of uh, cream, so for angle interlock it is a 7 percent okay. and the, the binder thread and 30 percent for orthogonal so, that we have seen. But upon stretching beyond maximum strain of 1 percent carbon breaks. So, that is why the in 3 D uh, composite the binder threads they do not take part in loading. The values of cream of binder or threads as we have seen here 7 to 7 and 30 percent respectively. So, in addition to the fact that average strength of 3 D angle interlock composite was higher than 3 D orthogonal the difference was statistically insignificant. This, this, are the, this difference was statistically insignificant although it is little bit higher. So, the same pattern was observed for uh, drape span yarn hybrid yarn that composite made of drape span hybrid yarn. So, this is uh, the same pattern was there given this is these are the for for powder coating and these are for trip okay now let us see the mechanics of crack propagation so in the if we see the crack propagation so after uh, the tensile breakage we have studied the crack propagation here in 2 D crack propagation was not in straight line. Similarly, here the crack propagation, propagation was not straight, but this one is the orthogonal B 3 is the stuffed or pull out. You can see there. It was noticed that the line of material separation in 2 D composite and 3 D 
angle interlock or not straight line unlike this is a straight line. This can be attributed to the fact that the here this is the line of the optical image of fractured here it is a fractured sign. Now, the here material separation line it is straight here material separation line is angle. So, due to the structure of the base fabric the characteristics of crack is there it shows the similar characteristics. Okay. So, what we can observe the crimp and pattern of consecutive binder of determines the strength as well as the strain of the composite okay. that is a binder and in the last part we will discuss the flexural properties of this uh, uh, composite made from 2D and 3D fabrics. Now, here in 2D we can see here again the bending rigidity of 2D is higher than the 3D fabrics, but the powder coated fabrics were higher little bit than the drape the reason we have already explained flexural strength it shows the similar trend to that of the tensile the reason is almost same here so overall the 2D composite shows better flexural strength and modulus as compared to 3D fabrics. This is attributed to the fact that higher number of load bearing toe break are in line with the direction of tensile and flex flexural strength, flexural loading for 2D composite. So, that is the basic reason here for having higher flexural and tensile strength of 2D composite. Although 2D composite here we have used a three layers of fabrics to make it equivalent, but coming to the impact notch impact test where we have used IZOD notch impact testing. Here the impact method we have already explained earlier. Now, if we study the tomography micro -tomo computed tomography, we can see here it is a 2D drape and 2D powder coating. This one is with matrix and fiber this is with matrix and fiber here only the fiber without matrix and section slice showing the fiber breakage here it shows the fiber breakage part ok. This is for 3D oven angle interlock earlier it was 2D now 3D orthogonal. Here we can see here now 2D and 3D impact strength now we can see the impact strength of 3D orthogonal is much higher than the 2D although tensile and flexural strength was high in case of 2D oven composite, but in case of 3D orthogonal it is very high followed by the 2D angle interlock. 
similar trend is there for powder coated composites. Now, you can see here. So, this is the powder coated 3 D orthogonal composite, it is high. So, 3 D orthogonal composite absorbs more energy than 2 D by approximately 45 percent, while 3 D orthogonal made from drapion it is again approximately 47 percent. So, that the image indicates the failure of the specimen as a result of breakage of warp threads in 2 D fabric composite and the breakage of straight stuffer warp threads in 3 D angle and orthogonal. Now, here breakage is there only in the in 3 D fabric only in the stuffer warp thread, but the load is carried can be carried by the the binder also. It is the same image we have seen. So, that is why the energy notch impact energy is much higher in case of 3 D oven composite. And if we compare with the uh, drip span yarn composite made from drip span and uh, powder coated. So, powder coated is uh, little bit it shows a little bit higher in tensile strength typically 11 and 20 percent respectively as we have observed here. And this is basically due to better impregnation as we have already explained here better impregnation in case of powder coating. So, the melt flow distance refers to the, uh, the uh, distance that matrix has to travel within the reinforcing material and melt flow distance is uh, required is low in case of powder coated. So, in drape spinning process the carbon fibers are present in the core. So, melt flow distance is required is very high and that is why proper impregnation is not there. So, on the other hand the electros electrostatic spray coating it has not changed the elliptical cross section of the carbon. So, here it has become uh, uh, circular and this is the carbon toe if we see it is carbon toe without any uh, matrix, but once we produce the yarn drape yarn it has become circular. So, this flow distance need is higher, but in case of powder coated toe it the shape remains almost same. So, flow distance required is much lower here. This has been explained here. So, powder coated toe preg based 2 D and 3 D composite including 2 D oven composite and 3 D angle interlock composite is that so that 11 and 21 percent higher flexual strength than corresponding drape based composite here. So, despite higher viscosity of PP powder matrix than PP fiber, PP fiber matrix has got very low uh, lower uh, viscosity and PP powder we have seen that viscosity is very high. Despite 
that fact better impregnation of powder coated takes place and this proves that manufacturing process of powder coating is highly advantageous. Now, the final comment is that the composites made from powder coated top rigs so better matrix impregnation and less porosity compared to composite made from drape hybridian. So, hybridian shows little bit higher porosity white content was there. The and the use of powder coating technique helps in overcoming, overcoming the disadvantage of hybrid type yarn. And from our basic study, we are very confident that the powder coating has got its uh, bright future after eliminating few uh, shortcomings like uh, speed of production, uh, that volume of production or uh, some uh, um, factors. We need uh, commercial grade uh, machine also. So, we are very hopeful. Now, I will um, uh, finish uh, the topic of composite here and these are the references we have uh, used from uh, different uh, sources. So, there are many other areas left, but it is not possible to cover everything here. So, we have here it has been tried to cover the to get the broad overview of the area of technical textiles. I hope you have enjoyed this course. Thank you.